welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be looking at the Veritas scraper plane, showing you how to set it up, use it, etc. Stick with me. First, let me say that this is my first, like, how to use that plane video. I know I've done a couple on, like, how to set up the plane and stuff like that, but this one's a lot more in depth. So, if you are watching this video and you watch the whole thing, I don't want you to watch just a clip and, you know, say he sucks or whatever. Watch the whole thing. I want constructive criticism. I want your guys' feedback because I want to start making these videos and using them to educate others. Well, what do you want to know? Was there something that I missed? Was there something I could have done better? Those are the kinds of constructive criticisms that I want to hear. You might even just say, you know what, Jamie, you suck at these kinds of videos. Just stick with your reviews and comparisons. And that's perfectly fine too. Um, one of the things I love about making YouTube videos is interacting with you guys and reading your comments and hearing your opinions. So have at them. I want to hear them. I'm opening up the door. <laughs> I know that that might be bad, but I'm opening it up. Let me know if there's anything that I can improve on. And hopefully I can keep making more of these unless you guys think I really do suck at them. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. <laughs> This is the scraper plane. I do have a video that looks at the Lee Nielsen to the Veritas to the Stanley. I'll put a link for that video up in the corner. Obviously, you can see which one I picked, and if you watch that video, you'll find out why. <laughs> so, the first thing, we need to start with what all of these parts are, so you know what we're looking at whenever we start talking about how to set this up and how to use it, those kinds of things. So, this is the knob, this is the tote, this right here is the cap, that holds the iron or the blade, whatever you want to call it, that's what actually does the cutting, against the frog. This piece back here, yes, it is called the frog. I actually didn't think it would be, but I checked their manual, and it is, and I get it because it is supporting the iron. These two knobs right here are the frog adjustment that change the angle of it. So when you adjust those, it takes this and tilts it, this frog right here, and tilts it. Okay, We'll dive into how to use that and how all that works in a little bit. Underneath here, I'll try to catch it in the light. See that knob down there? That is the blade bow thumb screw. So tighten or loosen that blade and it puts a bow on the thin iron. This plane also comes with a thick iron. So this one is 1 16th, this one is 1 8th. I do have a video that specifically looks at these two irons and kind of tells you like, which one do you need, which one do you want to use, that kind of stuff. We'll dive into it a little bit here, but I don't want to go too far into that because I really just want to talk about how do you use this plane because that question comes up a lot. The first place we have to start is blade prep. You have to think about this as a glorified card scraper because it is. It's a card scraper in a plane body. The most important thing on a card scraper is that burr. It's the same thing with this plane. You have to make sure that these are prepped really well. If you bought this plane new, you can skip this step and go to the honing and the burr part of this video. If you bought this used, or say you have an old one, or you, you bought a used iron or whatever, and you need to reestablish the bevel, this is the part that you want to watch because this is important. So both of these irons, here's the thin one, that needs to be at 45, and this needs to be at 45. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do that. If you want to, you can grab your stone and try to freehand it. But again, just try to make sure you're holding at that 45 following the primary and sliding back. Okay, if you're able to do this and hold the primary at that angle, go for it. Obviously, you'd have to go sideways because of that stone. But if you're not comfortable with freehand, that is 100% okay. I am not one of those people that are going to tell you you are not a woodworker if you can't freehand because to me, that's absolute BS. Okay, I don't care how you prep or sharpen your irons. All I care about is that you're building stuff and having fun. If you're building stuff, you're a woodworker. Period. End of sentence. I don't care what your method is for anything. So just keep that in mind. If you need to use a jig with this, that is 100% okay. So the first one, you can use the MK2 if you have it. You'd set it to position number one, and then you would set this to 45. And then you also want to make sure that this is pointed up, because if you have it at any other direction, that's creating a micro bevel off of that 45 degrees. So keep that in mind. Both irons fit into this. It absolutely maxes it out though. Just know that it's, <laughs> this has to be really far to the side. It, it maxes it out, but they do fit into here. So you can use that. 
The only thing that you need to pay attention to is look how wide this iron is compared to the stone. So it's almost dead on. I'd say maybe, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So if your stone is worn on the sides, that's something you need to keep in mind. Or get bigger sandpaper, get like a strip of sandpaper or something like that and use that instead of your stone. So think about that before you spend all the time setting this up. Check it on your stone and see if that's going to be an option. I did check it with the Veritas side clamping and the iron does not fit. Okay, it doesn't fit in here. I have it completely maxed out. That doesn't work. So just keep that in mind. You cannot use this one. The other option is I, I love this tool. So it's just, it's a very simple file holder, but I use it for so many different things because you can do 90 degrees to the file and then you can also do 45 degrees to the file. So if you don't want to use the jig because you're worried about your hand pressure or you don't have a big enough stone, you don't want to freehand, whatever, this is a great option. And I don't think this thing's very expensive. I'll put the numbers up on the screen. But all you do with this is you put the flat side here and then you bump the iron up against the file. I don't know if you guys will be able to see the angle because of the light. So you can put this into a vise if you want and do it that way. I'd prefer to just hold it in my hand and slide it. Okay. Gentle light passes. Okay, till you reestablish that bevel. With the thin one, it's not going to take long because there's not a lot there. With the thicker one, if you're trying to prep a thicker iron, this is going to take you a long time. So you might want to look at using a jig or honestly taking this one to the grinder and then just really make sure you're staying square. It's very important for both of these irons to remain square because of the way that this plane is, especially this one. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You want to try to stay square. Keep checking it with a, um, a square uh, or however you check for square. But you have a ton of different options to get this to 45. I know I literally just said that I prefer not putting this in a vise. I don't know why I said that because I do. <laughs> So you take this. Now what I do, let me open this up so you can see. See these two in, these two uh, rods in there? I put the scraper in between those so it rests on that. And then let me tighten it down. There we go. So now I know it's not going to slip through the vise because it's resting on those. I don't know if your vise has that or not, but mine's like perfect for it to rest like right in here. So... All right, so then you take this, that's the 45 degree one is the one, way off camera. The 45 degree one is the one that you want. And the whole point is you want to push this against the iron. That's what you want to focus on. You don't really want to do downward pressure. Just let the file do the work for you. Push it up against that, and then you just go back and forth. I'm getting there. This iron, I got this one used. It's out of whack. So these sides are higher than the middle and that's definitely not what I want because you want the middle, especially on the thin iron, to be what's doing the cutting because you put a bow into it. So these sides being higher, not a good thing. So I'm going to keep at this. I'm not going to bore you with the footage. All right, so I got the iron prepped to 45 degrees. It needed quite a bit of work. It was really high on these sides and low in the middle. So took a while. Didn't want to waste your guys' time with that footage of me just standing here filing. So... This next step, if you are only going to use this with a bow, like if you think about a card scraper, how you put your thumbs in and you push and it lifts the corners out, you can skip this part. If you are going to use this iron straight, not bowed, or you're going to use the thick iron, this next step, we are going to round the corners. So you're going to do the same thing as you did before, put it up into your vise or use it by hand, either way. Still take that 45 degree side of your file and then you're just going to ease the corners over a few times. Make sure you're staying at 45. Just lift it that way. Well, it would help if I had the file going the right way. There we go. I had the file backwards, so pay attention to that. <laughs> Make sure you're putting the bevel on the right side of the file. So here we go. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's very slight, just easing the corners. Basically all it is, if you want to see it on here, again, make sure the bevel's going the right way. 
just slightly. Just a very little bit, that's all you need. The bigger iron, I am gonna get a little bit more dramatic with it. Um, I want these to be really rounded. Now, if you have a grinder, it would be a lot easier to do this on the grinder, but you can also do it on the hand file, you can use it on the stone, you can use it on whatever, but basically we're just rounding these corners over the same way I just did with the thin one on here, tilting it to the side and going like that. All right, I'm, I just want to show you this because I found a cool way to, I don't know if it's cool, but I put this in the vise and then I'm taking the iron and moving the iron along it. So that's an option too. Just find a way, find a way to round these corners. See those ones? I did these ones a little bit more dramatic too. I'm doing the same thing to the thick one. When it comes to rounding these corners over, I don't want you guys to stress. You're literally just easing the side. So see how I did that one? You're just easing the side so it doesn't create lines in your workpiece. It's pretty much the same thing you do with a plain iron. Actually, this is all I do to a plain iron, but some people put like a legit camber. I don't. So all you do is ease the corners. Don't stress on it. The next thing they recommend is honing these irons. So you want to hone them to 800 and then 1,000. So that would be honing the bevel to get rid of the file marks and then flattening the backs. I'm not going to show you guys how to sharpen these because I have an entire video series that shows you how to sharpen irons. Now that we have the primary bevel at 45, we have the corners eased over, we honed them up to 1,000, now you want to put a burr on this. When you put a burr on these, the burr goes on the opposite side of the bevel. So here's the bevel, the burr goes that way. Okay, so keep that in mind. Obviously, you're not going to do one this dramatic, but it goes opposite side of the bevel. For the thin blade, you can actually use the Veritas. Obviously, you can tell I'm obsessed with Veritas and their tools. <laughs> you can use this thing. So I always forget which way to put the iron, but what you can do is you can sight down it. There's no way I'm going to show you in video, but sight down it. Find out which way your bevel needs to go. Remember, burr on the opposite side. Put it in here, and then you can run it over there and get your 15-degree angle because that's what they recommend is a 15 degrees. The big iron will not fit in here. You can also use the AccuBur. Now, the AccuBur is overkill for this because what it does is it puts a bevel, or excuse me, a burr on both sides of like the card scraper. So if you're using a card scraper and that side gets dull, you flip it over and then you can keep going. That doesn't work for these because you can't use this side. You can't flip this around and use this side in the plane. It doesn't work that way. So it's overkill, but you can use it. The other thing that you can use, I actually don't have a burnishing rod. And I really thought I did. I searched my shop and I can't find it, so I don't know if I sold it or what. But I don't have a burnishing rod, so I'm going to use a screwdriver as the example. So what they recommend is they go here, so match the bevel. And then do four or five passes that way. And then tilt it to 15 degrees. If you want to get technical and bust out like a protractor or whatever you want to do to figure out the angle, you can. But you do a couple matching the bevel. Then tilt it up and do 15 degrees and match that. Since I don't have a burnishing rod and I do have the AccuBur, that's what I'm going to use. So if you have the AccuBur, I can show you how to use that now. Let's start with the thin one. Um, it doesn't matter which way you put the bevel for the AccuBur because it's going to create one on both sides. Again, it, it doesn't matter. You just, it's overkill. You can't use the other side. So just put it up in your vise. When I use the AccuBur, this is for card scrapers too. I use the small one, then this one, then that one. So I'll usually do like four strokes with this one, two with that one, two with that one, and then I call it a day. Okay. You can experiment with this too. If you want different angles, if you want different things, test them out that it's not going to hurt anything. If you put a burr on this and you need to get rid of it, hit the bevel real quick, hit the back and then do it again. Don't stress on this part either. So here we go. I'm going to go to the light one. One. As you notice too, I'm using my thumb to push. The AccuBurr stays level. You don't put it at any kind of angle. Two. Three. Four. Okay. Let me go to the middle one. Next one over. One, two. Then you can check. All right, I've got a good burr on this. I'm gonna go one more time with this one, the big one. There we go. Now again, this is trial and error. You're not gonna be able to see the burr on here, but you can feel it. And you just kinda gotta test. If you've never put a burr on anything before, 
feel it a little bit, see how it works, and then it doesn't take a lot to take it out, put another burr on it, or extend that burr, whatever. Don't stress. So then we'll do the big one. I'm gonna do the same thing. For the bigger one, because you're gonna be cutting with more of this width, you wanna try to make sure your burr is even all the way across. Like I can feel I'm heavy on this side and not as much on this side. So I'm gonna correct that going to the middle one. There we go, I evened it out. So now I'm gonna to go to the next one. I'm a little uneven in the middle right here. So I'm gonna run it again. So what I'm doing is light pressure, heavier pressure, light pressure to try to fix that. And there we go, I'm happy with that. I don't know if you guys, you won't be able to see that in the video, but we've got a nice burr along there. Be careful when you do this because you could cut yourself, but sometimes when I feel it's a little rough, I take whatever finger is calloused enough and run it over there to get rid of some of those extra coarse bits. I don't know if it's necessary or not. It's just something that I've always done. <laughs> don't cut yourself. If you cut yourself, it is not my fault. Okay, I just, I just need to say that. All right, so let's go about putting this into the plane and getting it set up. The first thing you need to understand is how these adjustments work. So if I loosen this back one, turning it towards me, and then tighten this one, turning it towards me, see it move the frog forward? Okay, and then you move this one back to tighten it up. Now, if you want to move the frog, so that was going this way. If you want to move the frog the other way, you loosen this one going away from you. And then you also turn this one going away from you and it picks the frog back up. So see how that works? So away from you, it's going to go up. Towards you, it's going to go down. So keep that in mind. Practice with it a little bit. I always forget which way to go. I always have to test and be like, oh, wrong way, wrong way. It, that's okay. It happens. Okay. So to figure out what angle... The easiest way to do this, and this is going to be really tough to show you guys in camera because I have the camera right here and I kind of have to stand to the side. But what you want to do is take your scraper iron with the burr, set it at an angle and see what it produces. Okay, so that right there has got some dust. Set it at whatever angle you want. Whatever angle you find it doing efficient cutting, hold it there as best as you can to get them off to the side. Hold it there. Slide this over. And then you want to adjust this frog to match that angle. So clearly I need to go more forward. About right there. I can't see because I'm off to the side. But that looks good. So see how I match that angle? Okay. Then drop your iron in there. And now I'm going to readjust the angle of the camera to show you the next part. The way that we set the frog angle works for both the thick and the thin iron. I'm sorry for not showing you that. But now that we have the iron dropped into the plane, what I like to do is I put both fingers on the sides to make sure that it's, it's sitting flat. And then you just tighten that cap screw down. This one right here. You do not need to crank down on it. Please do not over tighten. Just snug it up. Okay. This is where you're going to start seeing the differences in the irons. For the thin one, we are going to use the blade bow adjustment screw to change how aggressive this cut is. So since I just dropped it in there and used my hands to push it down, I'm going to check. It's already kind of taken a shaving. <laughs> so that's why I like to check because if it's going to work where it's at, I'm just going to leave it there. Sorry, the camera's in the way. Let me see if I can go this way. There we go. It's already kind of taken shavings. <laughs> All right, well, if you want it to be more aggressive, you take this and turn it. Now you're going to micro adjust it like you would the depth of a plane. As you adjust that, you're going to see this part go farther and farther out towards the front of the plane. That's creating the bow. Okay, so let's see how that does. There we go. Sorry, I'm like off to this. Like the camera's in front of me and I have my arms around it. So that's already taking a shaving. If you wanted to be more aggressive, then you just advance that screw a little bit more. If you need to be a little bit less, you retract that screw. For the narrow iron, you really don't need to adjust the frog once you find the angle that you like and you don't need to tap tap with a hammer. Okay. So that's one of the benefits of using a bow on this scraper plane. So let me show you the kind of adjustments we would do with the thick iron. I'm going to pause for a moment and actually show you guys the thin iron in action.
And then this is what the board looks like after using the thin iron. When going from a thin to a thick iron, the first thing is you want to make sure that that blade bow thumb screw is retracted. You don't want that sticking out at all. Can you see that right there, that hole? That's where it comes out. So make sure that it's not advanced. You're going to need to loosen this up because the iron's thicker. Then drop the iron in. So you always want to make sure the burr is facing towards the front of the plane. Drop it in there. Light pressure with your hands. Tighten it down. Do not over tighten that screw. See where you're at. Okay, I'm like not taking anything. See that? There's just dust. So I obviously need to be more aggressive. You have a couple different options here, okay? I know I say all the time that I do not like the tap tap of the hammer, but for this plane I do. I like being able to just drop the weight of the hammer onto it to advance it a little bit more, get a little bit more aggressive with the cut. The other thing you can do is adjust your frog so it's more forward, giving you more aggressive of in a cut that way. The other method I've seen people use is they take paper and they drop it here like that. Make sure there's no folds in it. You want it to be thin. Set their iron on there or set their plane on there. Loosen this. Let the iron fall where it's at and then snug it back up. What I have found with this is, I don't know if it's the kind of paper I have, but it tends to be a little bit too aggressive for me. So let's see how it turned out. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that was a little bit too aggressive. Again, I'm like around the camera, arms coming from both sides, so that's why it just like took it. But yes, that's why I don't like the paper method. Plus, if you're being too rough with it, can you hear this? Okay, versus. So right here, I can tell I'm being too rough because it's creating like a, almost like a sanded surface. I keep hitting the camera, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but over here it's smooth where we use the other one. So, that's one of the reasons I don't like the paper method. Again, it could be the kind of paper that I use, but let me fix that. I like the tap tap of the hammer for this. That's still cutting, okay. Give me a little bit of sawdust, drop the weight. See where I'm at. There we go, and now we're getting some nice shavings. I know right now this board isn't flat because it's not taking even shavings. There we go, with this one I might get a little bit more aggressive. Um, it's taking really thin shavings, but I can take more, so let me try. That's probably going to be too much. Oh, that was good. There we go. So, when it comes to the thicker iron, it's kind of trial and error. Try different things out. If you try the paper method and your paper is too thick, drop it in there. Try the tap tap with a hammer. You can also try adjusting this forward or backwards to change how aggressive the cut is. Always remember too, you can use plain wax with this. Um, because this one is so difficult to push, I like lather plain wax onto the bottom of it just to make it a little bit easier. I use the Cottrell Tool Works plain wax. Um, the actual case is somewhere else, but I'll put his information down below if you're interested in ordering some of that. Here is the thick iron in action so you can hear and see that. Here is what the board looks like after the thick iron. So hopefully this helps answer some questions, make you a little bit 
like less scared of this plane, you're not gonna mess anything up. So if you have it and it's not working right, try some of the things that I showed you. If you haven't bought this plane yet because you're not sure about you know, how it works and you're worried about using it, try it. It's one of those things that you have to buy, have in your hands, fiddle with a few different things, and then once you get it to work right, I mean, you saw the shavings it takes. It, it takes awesome shavings, and it's a lot of fun to use because you're scraping, especially like, look at this oak. I love the oak. Of course, there's maple in there too, but I love this. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So don't let it scare you. I hope I helped answer some questions. Just remember, I'm looking for constructive criticism. So if there's something I could have done better, something I could have shown better, let me know down below so I can improve and get better at doing these videos. If you have this plane and like it, let us know. If you have the plane and don't like it, let us know. If you per prefer a thick or a thin iron, also let us know down below. I have a whole separate video that talks about that, so I'm not going to dive into that here. Any questions, any comments, anything like that, again, let us know down below. I hope you enjoyed, and have a good day. <laughs>